Mazda is finally having its first real crack at an electric car, the MX-30 small SUV set to test the waters. The MX-30 behind me isn't the electric version, instead it's the M-Hybrid, or mild hybrid. Yep, the electric isn't here just yet, but the M-Hybrid is, with it serving as an intriguing taste test. But with low emissions clearly a priority, does the MX-30 M-Hybrid go far enough? Well, it's time to find out. Before we do, there's a bit to get through here, so I'll split this video into chapters with their time codes right over here, so feel free to skip ahead to anything you're particularly interested in. And if you're watching on YouTube, there are markers in the timeline below to make scrubbing ahead even easier, but be sure to give this video a like before you do. And as always, if you want to know more, you can read my detailed written review over at the Cars Guide website, so click on the link in the description below. And if you're not sure if the MX-30M Hybrid is right for you, we've reviewed plenty of other SUVs. And if you want to stay on top of any new ones on the market, be sure to subscribe to the Cars Guide YouTube channel and tap that bell icon to receive a notification every time we make a new upload. Now, let's take a look at pricing and specification. As a small SUV, the MX-30M Hybrid finds itself in a highly competitive segment, with it facing stiff competition from the Toyota CHR Hybrid and Subaru XV Hybrid, as well as the soon to be released Kia Niro Hybrid. That said, the MX-30M Hybrid is available in three variants, with the entry-level G20e Evolve priced from $33,990 plus on-road costs, while the mid-range G20e Touring and flagship G20e Astina check in at $36,490 and $49,90 respectively. As such, the MX-30M Hybrid's three variants are $1,400, $1,300 and $1,800 more expensive than the mechanically related CX-30 G20 small SUVs Evolve, Touring and Astina equivalents. Either way, standard equipment in the G20e Evolve includes push-button start, satellite navigation, digital radio, an eight-speaker sound system, a head-up display, dual-zone climate control and black and grey cloth upholstery. The G20e Touring adds keyless entry, a 10-way power adjustable driver's seat with memory functionality and pure white Maztex and grey cloth upholstery. Meanwhile, the G20e Astina also picks up adaptive LED headlights, a sunroof, a 12-speaker Bose sound system, a heated steering wheel, heated front seats and vintage brown Maztex and black cloth upholstery. Next, we'll check out design. The MX-30M Hybrid is clearly a Mazda model but it's also unlike anything the brand has produced before. Up front, its LED headlights and daytime running lights are familiar, but the grille they intersect with looks like a letterbox when compared to Mazda's usually oversized item. Even the MX-5 sports car has a larger mouth. There's also no escaping the MX-30M hybrid surrounding black plastic cladding, which follows the precedent set by the related CX-30 small SUV. In this instance though, an attractive set of 18-inch alloy wheels fills the wheel arches. But the key attraction is the striking set of freestyle rear doors, which are taken straight from another of the brand's sports cars, the iconic RX-8. There's certainly one way to make a statement. The steeply raked roofline is another MX-30M hybrid calling card, with it leading to the rear's LED taillights, which are once again familiar. Inside, the MX-30 gives you the very best that Mazda has to offer, with a 7-inch multifunction display positioned between the Taco and Speedo. And ahead of it is a windshield projected head-up display, which is also pretty good. And to the side, you've got an 8.8-inch multimedia display, which is powered by Mazda's Mazda Connect software. Certainly an improvement over its predecessor. And importantly, it's not a touchscreen. Instead, it's all controlled by this rotary dial down here. Interestingly though, the MX-30 has a 7-inch touchscreen lower on the center console, which is responsible for the climate controls. That move certainly seems to be at odds with the strategy elsewhere, although it does work pretty well. The MX-30 does stand out from other Mazda models with the selection of eco-friendly materials it uses, headlined by Maztec's vegan leather upholstery. There's also cloth upholstery used throughout and this vintage cork, which is a bit of a callback to Mazda's earlier days. That said, it is still a thoroughly premium affair with plenty of soft touch materials used throughout, so it definitely feels like the full Mazda experience. Next, we'll check out practicality. The MX-30 is on the larger side for a small SUV, so you'd expect that means good things for practicality. Unfortunately, it doesn't. 
Its boot is undersized for the segment at 311 litres with all the seats up. If you stow the 60-40 split fold second row, that grows to 876 litres, but that's still pretty underwhelming. That said, there's a small load lip to contend with, which can make loading bulkier items a little bit more difficult, although you do get two tie-down points for securing loose items. Amenities-wise, it's missing a 12-volt power outlet and bag hooks. Next, we'll check out the second row. Obviously, the MX-30 is a small SUV with a difference, and that starts with how you access its second row. Firstly, you have to open up the front door to expose the rear door handle, and then you can open up the freestyle door to expose a rather large opening. But unfortunately, getting in can be a little awkward. I've got the driver's seat set to my 184 centimeter position, and I've got about an inch of leg room and a couple of centimeters of headroom, so it is particularly tight back here. And if you had three adults, there's not quite enough room for them to be seated across from one another, particularly with the large transmission tunnel in the middle taking up precious foot space. Amenities wise, there's not a great deal going on in the second row. There are no directional air vents to speak of, let alone connectivity options, be it USB or 12 volt. What you do get though is a fold down armrest with a couple of cup holders, and there are also door bins that take a regular bottle each. Plus there are two Isofix and three top tether anchorage points for fitting child seats. Next, we'll check out the first row. Up front, there's a bit more going on. You've got a central bin, which is decently sized. And in front of that, you've actually got a couple of cup holders, which are concealed by these cork lids. Then of course, you have the floating center console with a large tray underneath for storing items. There's also a 12 volt power outlet and two USB-A ports to play with too. Then of course, there is the glove box, which is decently sized, certainly large enough for the manual and maybe some other bits and bobs. And of course, you have a couple of door bins, which take regular bottles as well, and a sunglasses holder. Next, we'll check out safety. ANCAP awarded the MX-30 its maximum five-star safety rating for 2020, with all three of the M-Hybrids variants getting full marks from the Independent Safety Authority. Range-wide advanced driver assist systems generously extend to front autonomous emergency braking with intersection assist, and pedestrian and cyclist detection, lane keep and emergency assist, adaptive cruise control with stop and go functionality, traffic sign recognition, driver attention alert, high beam assist, active blind spot monitoring and rear cross traffic alert, rear autonomous emergency braking, a reversing camera, rear parking sensors and tire pressure monitoring. While steering assist, driver monitoring, front cross traffic alert, surround view cameras and front parking sensors are also fitted to the G20e Astina. They can be added to the G20e Evolve and G20e Touring by optioning their $1500 Vision Technology Package. This is disappointing because steering assist and front parking sensors in particular should be fitted across the range from the get-go. Other standard safety equipment includes 10 airbags, anti-skid brakes, and the usual electronic traction and stability control systems. Now we'll take a look at the engine and transmission. Much like the CX-30 G20, the MX-30M Hybrid is powered by a two litre naturally aspirated four cylinder petrol engine, dubbed Sky Active G, which produces an average 114 kilowatts of power and 200 newton meters of torque. That said, the MX-30M Hybrid separates itself from the CX-30 G20 by adding a mild hybrid system, which combines a 24-volt battery with a belt-driven integrated starter generator to provide a small electric torque boost. Either way, drivers sent to the front wheels via a tried and true six-speed torque converter automatic transmission with paddle shifters. Next, we'll check out the fuel consumption. Thanks to its mild hybrid system, the MX-30M Hybrid has regenerative braking and extended idle stop operation, which helps to reduce its fuel consumption on the combined cycle test to an underwhelming 6.4 litres per 100 kilometres. Why underwhelming? Well, the CX-30 G20 averages 6.5 litres, so the benefits of the mild hybrid system aren't that great on paper, especially when compared to full hybrid models. In our real-world testing, we recorded a higher 7.1 litres per 100 kilometres over 255 kilometres of driving, with the launch route primarily taking place on high-speed country roads and highways, so expect a slightly higher return in stop-start city traffic. Now, we'll take a look at ownership. 
As with all Mazda models, the MX-30M Hybrid comes with a five-year unlimited kilometre warranty with five years of roadside assistance, both of which are average when compared to Kia's market-leading seven-year terms with no strings attached. And the MX-30M Hybrid service intervals are on the short side when it comes to distance at every 12 months or 10,000 kilometres, whichever comes first. That said, cap price servicing is available for the first five visits, costing $1,942 in total, which is fairly reasonable. Next, we'll check out how it drives. In terms of the drive experience, the CX-30 G20 and the MX-30M Hybrid are awfully similar. They do share the same engine, so performance is fairly lethargic. Even with the integrated starter generator, you don't get all that much punch but they do have that transmission in common with it providing smooth gear changes, if not quick, but it is responsive to inputs, which is always a good thing. In terms of handling, the MX-30M Hybrid goes around corners just like the CX-30 G20. In that way, for small SUV, it handles really well. It does of course have a little bit of body roll, but overall control is pretty good, so it's actually quite enjoyable to punt around. Braking performance is also pretty decent, although the pedal can be a little bit wooden. Of course, part of the handling experience is steering. It's an electric setup and it's fairly well weighted at speed. At low speed though, it can be a little too hefty, so low speed maneuvers like parking can be made a little bit more difficult than they need to be. But otherwise, it's pretty good, proving to be nice and direct. The ride in the MX-30M Hybrid is also pretty good, all things considered. You've got McPherson struts up front for the suspension, but a less sophisticated torsion beam at the rear. Without independent suspension, the MX-30M Hybrid can be a little bit busy on broken surfaces and uneven roads, but it never gets too out of control, so it's definitely pretty comfortable and more than livable. In terms of noise levels, at speed, of course, the engine noise does help to drown out a bit of the wind whistle over the side mirrors, particularly at 110 kilometers per hour, and some of the tire roar that comes into the cavern. Certainly an improved experience for Mazda, but there's still a little bit of work that needs to be done. If standing out from the crowd is your thing, the MX-30M Hybrid is really hard to go past when cross-shopping it with the related CX-30 G20 or any other small SUV, especially when in G20e evolved form. That said, if you really want to go low emissions, the MX-30M Hybrid is clearly not on the same level as its full hybrid rivals. And if you want to go zero emissions instead, the MX-30 Electric is just around the corner. So hold on a little longer because the bones are there for something truly unique. And don't forget, there's even more detail in my written review, including a breakdown of the overall score over at the Cars Guide website.